and this is my little channel, Lily and the Bee. Uh, I like to share all the things I've made, I like to crochet and sew, and I make animals, toys, sort of quirky things, <laughs> and all sorts of things really. I like to walk along the beach with my husband Neil and do a little bit of beach combing. Here's something I found this week, <laughs> a little bottom of a bottle with an S on. Uh, don't know what it would have been originally. It's quite frosted on the back, but it's not as frosted as what I normally find. So I don't think it's quite as old, but um, I had to take that home. Uh, I thought that was quite interesting. And we took quite a lot of bricks as well. There were a lot of bricks washed in, which were really smooth. So we have taken quite a few of those home and I'm going to put them in the garden, making kind of a little bit of a, an edge. We've got quite a country cottagey higgledy piggledy garden. So things like that do look quite nice. Uh, beach combed things so yeah I'm looking forward to getting a few more of the bricks they're a bit heavy obviously to carry home so I normally get them I did carry one in my backpack if you remember from the other week uh, but this time we had I had bought a bag and Neil he carried most of that home for us it was also a beautiful rainbow it started to rain it was a bit of a murky morning anyway and sun came out for a little bit and then it started to rain and there was a gorgeous rainbow which I did manage to video um, I took another video where I was videoing and concentrating, obviously I'll take the video and the sea came in. So I, um, I'll um i put that one up now, actually, because that was quite funny. You can hear me kind of running backwards at the end. Um, so I'll pop that. Oh, yeah, I'll pop that in now. And the, it was a murky day. Um, this, uh, the North Sea looks really murky anyway. It's not a blue sea. Um, it looks quite brown, really, <laughs> browny, bluey. Uh, but it was even more murky than normal. But I don't mind. I really like our local beaches. I like that they look, you've got the trees. I mean, the coastal erosion obviously isn't a good thing, but it it, it makes the beaches quite nice when you're walking. You've got the, the washed, washed out trees that have fallen down and they've kind of sunken into the sand and the sea and the, and the sand and the sun has bleached them and they, they do look they do look nice but obviously coastal erosion isn't good um in a couple of weeks i'm going to go to i've been begging my husband can we go can we go because uh, you know i'm like driving i'd get lost going by myself i wouldn't know where to park so um north norfolk there's a place called haysborough which the coastal erosion is really bad there but it's supposed to be good for beach combing and a place called Trimming, I think it's called Trimmingham as well. So I'm hoping to go there and do a bit of somewhere different to go beach combing. So I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully I'll stop raining. I don't mind going in the rain, but it's nice obviously if it isn't raining, unless you get a lovely rainbow, <laughs> then it's worth it. I'm going to do a book review of a book by Tilly Rose. Um, she has a couple of other books, more slow stitching, and this is embroidery. I do have one of her other books, but I haven't made anything from it. But um, I really enjoyed the the, um, the new book, it's called Among the Wildflowers. So I'll go through that for you in a moment. I've also, garlic person has an outfit and a personality. Not stripe, I know so many people said about stripy French kind of look, which I kind of thought about that I wasn't sure I hadn't got the right fabric and I do try to use fabric I've already got at home, kind of upcycling things. So I didn't go there and, it, she is a she's a lady, very nice lady, look nice looking lady, garlic person. <laughs> um, she got a couple of outfits. One was a bit weird, but I was doing it last night. I didn't quite go right, and I made another one this morning. That looks good. So I'll show that to you. I'll show her to you as well. But I'm going to do the book review first of all. I think. Um, also to do with the garlic person. Uh, my idea of another one was a biscuit person because I've got the brown. <laughs> Uh, fabric and you all had amazing ideas they were loads better than mine i wrote down some of my favorites which were a strawberry person a toadstool person a pepper person a beetroot person and there were others i think i just wrote down a few at the beginning but all the ideas were really good i think it was something like a lettuce or a cabbage person but they were brilliant ideas and I, I think i will at some point make i don't know when but i will make some more with different heads because i do like that idea um I don't do, I, a couple of people ask if I sort of sell patterns or anything. Or I don't do anything like that at all because I'm just like a self-taught and I'm a make-up as a go-along person. 
Um, the pumpkin patterns I had bought off Etsy and I had just tweaked them, which is what I'll do same with the clothes. I just make, I just kind of, I might buy a pattern and then use the gist of it and then change it slightly or change it a lot or just to get the idea from. And the same with the clothes, like the clothes I have made, I just made them all up. So, and I don't think I'd be very good at writing patterns or anything like that. And also with the selling of the toys, it's not, I have, I've made people I know or, or sort of colleagues at work, a few people have asked me to make them for them and I have but I generally don't make them and sell them and put them on my Etsy shop or anything like that at the moment I'm not saying I never will um, but they take such a long time to make and obviously if I'm selling them to people who I don't know they've got to be perfect and then my, they're not always perfect and I'm quite a perfectionist with that kind of thing if I'm selling it to somebody I'd want it to be perfect so I'd be worried about every every stitch and everything and so yeah I haven't I'm not saying I won't ever do it. I may do it. I might make lots of animal, have different <laughs> garlicky, peoply kind of quirky people or animals. I don't know, but not at the moment is the is the answer on that. I know a few people did mention that to me. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go start with the. Um, I'm going to do the book review first. This is this isn't. First of all, this is the other book I have of hers. Um, which is Daydream Journals, which is, um, it's more slow stitching. I do like it and I do enjoy slow stitching, but I have discussed it a bit with you before because I've thought about slow stitching so, many, so much, like I've thought about it too much, really. I don't think the idea of it is that you overthink it. Um, I don't always look like the finished effect of all the little bits of fabric and everything, and I know... It's not about that, but for me personally, I, part of the enjoyment is being creative and I like the things I make to look nice at the end. That is part of the enjoyment for me. So I'm kind of trying more to just be more mindful with the stitching that I am doing. But as a slow stitching book, this is fantastic. And um, I will just show you a little bit, a few of the pictures inside. There's loads of ideas in here. Um, there's, it involved, um, she uses paper as well and sort of mixed media really. Um, there's projects in here. Um, there's a, a book. I said I'll show you a few, but this is not kind of what I'm going to be talking about. But I just wanted to show you. There's a there's the projects. And obviously the idea is that you can make them, you can make them your own anyway. Um, but I, it, it meant I think why I got it originally was because it mentions hand dye fabric and I still want to hand dye some fabric and I will when the weather is warm. That's what I'm waiting for, for that one. Um, yep, yeah, so I, as I said, I already had that anyway. And then I was looking, um, I've been watching, <laughs> this sounds a bit funny, but I do tend to watch, we've got TV in our bedroom and I do watch YouTube before I go to bed, wait for my husband to fall asleep and then he falls asleep quite early. I do normally watch a little bit of YouTube in bed and I quite like to watch embroidery technique videos where and it's literally just a close-up of somebody embroidering and I find it so relaxing and they're doing flowers and it's no talking just a little bit of music and that so that sends me to sleep I really like those and then I I really wanted to learn a few more stitches I know a few stitches but again you know what I'm like I tend to just make them up and I want to learn properly so I was looking for books on Amazon and this one popped up and it's a new book and it is called Tilly Rose again is called Among Among the Wild Flowers. I think it was $12.99, it wasn't too pricey. Where's the back of the book? Um, why I do like Tilly Rose anyway. One of the main reasons I bought it was because it said over 25 original embroidery designs with iron-on transfers, which I thought fantastic. I like the idea of the iron-on transfers and um and they're brilliant you literally just and i used linen and ironed it on it was really straightforward to do obviously you press the iron down the thing i found most difficult because i'm a speedy person as you can imagine is it says 30 seconds leave it on and i'm not patient so i had to literally which sounds a bit dangerous but i had to kind of walk away a little bit counting and just don't move the iron don't be it's not gonna burn it's okay so and it came out beautifully the design. I'll pop a picture up because I took a photograph 
of my design before I'd start stitching it. So I'll pop that up there now. Um, and it, as I was working the design, it didn't disappear or anything. It stayed on, it was fantastic. And I'll show you the design actually, because I've cut it out. You cut the design out first. This is the one I chose to do, which is lilac. And I like the idea of stitching the flowers that are in bloom at the moment. So I've got, if you can see these, but we have got a lovely lilac plant in our garden. And there's my south wall, <laughs> second hand south wall jug. And um, yeah, so they are actually blooming right now. And it's one of my favorite flowers to cut and bring and bring in, in the house. That gives me hay fever and I end up coughing and sneezing, but never mind. Um, yeah, so that, and it's got a space in the back where you can keep all the designs. And I think they did, the, I think the book was a bit wrong because they've got extra ones in here, which says, please use iron on transfers on this loose sheet as a replacement, because I think they've forgotten, I presume it, maybe it's just some of the early books, I don't know if they're all like it, they've forgotten to um, put them the wrong way round. So they're the right way. So then when you would have ironed them on, they'd be the, they'd be the wrong way. So yes, beautiful designs in the back. I have to try and be a bit slow when I'm, because I know... I'm aware that when I flick through books, I'm really fast and I shouldn't be, I should be a bit slower. So I'm not going to show you them all because if you do buy the book, you want to, um, you want to see some of it yourself, don't you? It wants to be a little bit of a surprise as to what's in there. So yeah, there's the, the other two lilac ones. So yeah, there's a lot of those in the back. I'm going to show you because I think, I couldn't decide, it's been ages choosing. These are for the forget-me-nots, and I think I'm going to do those next. I'm going to show you, I'll show you a bit more of the book, but I'll show you the my finished lilac. That's there. Do you know, my daughter bought me this, and I didn't know until it fell on there in stock. That needle minders would stick to the top of there. How brilliant does that look? I mean, I'm sure that's obvious, isn't it? But I didn't, I didn't realise. So anyway, here's my which I'm really proud of. I have used stem stitch for the stem and back stitch, and these. Let me see if I can show you a bit. Are lazy daisy, but not in a daisy shape. Got something on there yes a little bit of thread and i just used linen i used dmc threads because i am a bit fussy about threads because some of the ones i've got i do have some cheaper ones but they're a bit too shiny i don't like i prefer more of a matte look um I mean, maybe it should be the cheaper ones happen to the ones that i bought happen to supposed to be shiny i don't know um but yeah, that wasn't, that took me about three nights and I didn't spend hours each night doing it. So it was quite quick to do. And I don't know what I'm going to make with it in the book, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, there is an idea to do a seasonal quilt. So you just do four. No, actually, my idea was to do four. I'll show you in the book, actually. Um, Tilly has, quickly find it. She's used hers uh, sporadically around the um, around the um, patchwork that she's done, and I'm trying to think. She's a picture. Yeah, there it is. But the idea, <clears throat> I'm shouting at you now. The idea is that you have the four seasons and you can do the flowers around it. But I like that idea. And I like how she's stitched them, but I want something a bit cleaner and a bit neater. And I, but I don't know. I might make a bag out of it because you know I love making bags, so I can't. I'll just that'll be a bag before I've even been able to stop myself. Um, and I had this fabric which I didn't use, but I, it was laying there ready for the garlic person. And I do quite like. I think that looks quite nice together. So I'm either going to do kind of patchwork around the outside or a board around the outside and start to do a four kind of a lap quilt kind of thing, or 
I will make it into a bag. I don't know and I can't plan. I won't tell you because I'll just change my mind and do something else and then I'll worry about it. I think, oh, I told everybody I was going to make a quilt. I've made a bag instead. I think I'm lying to them <laughs> or something. So, yeah, but I, I do like that colour combination. I had this, but I don't think that goes. I had the blue as well, but I don't, I'm not sure whether I like the blue with it as well or not. So, yeah, that was my make so far. And it's quite good for me because a lot of time, I, a lot of times I really enjoy looking through books and I get inspired, but I don't make projects. So, and I really enjoyed the actual process of the, of the embroidery. I found it quite mindful without having to think I'm doing this because it's mindful. I just did find it mindful. So I guess that's a good thing, isn't it? It's just finding something that you really enjoy and that you you get in kind of in a, a calm relaxed zone while you're doing it and not thinking about anything else or worrying about anything else at the same time she's made a, a book there that's the forget me not pattern but she's used that with different with red and different colors and she's also used variegated threads which because there's a design in here i really like which is this one which for some reason i love it and it's quite simple but there are she's used variegated so i'm going to try and look for some of those i did look on the, online but they're quite expensive and I, I don't mind paying a lot of money but i'd rather see the colors in the in real life in a shop so i'm going to have a look somewhere and see if i can find some and do that design as well because i really i really like it so i'm definitely getting into embroidery this book has given me a lot of ideas and I like this one as well, Sunflower, it's really nice. I don't think I would style them in hoops, uh, this was the other one I was thinking about making because I have loads of these in my garden, they're like, well they are a bit of a weed aren't they? I have a tattoo, of it. I love wildflowers, I've got loads of, um, I've got loads of botanical tattoos I can't probably can't show you now, but I've got loads here um, and all up my arm, and I've got a wildflower one here as well, which does have cow parsley on it. Can't tell you very well. The cow parsley is there, um, and there's loads of it growing. It is a weed, and it's the back of our garden. They're massive, but this year because it's a wild, it's a slopey bit, and it's quite wild. Do you know what? I'm going to leave them. The bees love them. The butterflies love them. Just. It, it looks a bit weedy, but you know, so I thought I might make that as well, just as a making myself love the um the cow pass cow parsley. Um so what else was I going to say about the book? Right, at the beginning it's got the stitches as well, which is really good. And it all, she's also done it so you can cut it out. The idea is that you cut it out and you can take it stitching on the go. I don't have a stitching on the go kind of bag or anything, so I think I need to get something for my embroidery because I can see me doing quite a lot of it especially when we're on holiday in the van so yeah there's a page of, of, of the stitches so if you weren't sure you thought you might forget the stitches you can just pop that in with your out and about sewing kit and the instructions is lo lovely at the beginning it tells you all about embroidery and um stitch designs how to how to use the book the only thing i would say is if you were a complete beginner because you've got the pictures of the flowers and a little bit about the flowers and then the instructions are i'll show you this was an example are just the name of the stitch so if you wanted a step by step you use this stitch here and you use this stitch here the instructions might not quite be enough for you but you could look on youtube and or find out how to do the stitch or but that was the only thing I thought maybe for a complete beginner, if you've literally never, then you might need a bit more sort of help or support, I suppose, or find some more information. And that's a tiny thing. I mean, you could have never done it before and you're absolutely fine following the instructions. Because to me, I think the idea of the book is that you you make it your own. Um, you can use different stitches, you can use different colours, you can use mix and, mix and match the designs, all that kind of thing um so for me perfect um and i'm sure it's going to be really popular because it's a it's an absolutely gorgeous book so that is my little book review um sorry if i wafted the pages around too much because you know i'm a speedy person i can't do anything slowly and calmly and 
everything. So um, hopefully you got the gist, gist that I love the book and I definitely recommend it. And if you're into embroidery and, and flowers and it's got the fantastic at the back, all the wonderful templates, which you can use more than once, which you can use them three or four times. Um, yeah, really, really, really lovely book. And I'm really glad I bought it and it's worth the money because I've made something out of it straight away, which, like I said, is unusual for me. I do like looking at books and I enjoy books, but I don't always make things out of them straight away. Right. So now I would like you to meet or meet again. Clover, thank you for the name, Rowan. I hadn't asked for a name choice or anything, but um, Rowan put in the comments that Clover would be a good name, Clove, Clover. And I thought, oh, it's brilliant. So I have called her Clover. So thank you, Rowan. Um, and she has got, she's not stripy, as I said, um, but she's got, I made these this morning. Uh, she was actually in bed crocheting this morning, watching her, watching YouTube in bed, because it's my day off. And I thought, I'll have a little relax. And I thought, oh, I really need to get the, the pumpkin person made. And I had, actually, I'll show you this other outfit first. I made an outfit last night, but it was not very good. Um, I don't know why I thought making this one made a little, a little, a kind of a jeans and a boob tube. <laughs> you know what I'm like, I just, yeah, so, and it looked weird. And <laughs> her face, she's, she's looking at me now with a strange look on her. So she has got, a, if she goes disco dancing in the evening with her garlic friends, she does have um, a spare outfit, but I didn't use that. Um, I made her a... I think she has got a Parisian feel about her, actually, with the with the clothes that I did make. She has a, a jumper. So I made her... Oops, I'll show you a little bag that's going to keep falling off. I made a, a little circle. It's the start of a granny square, just like the little circly bit that you make, first of all, with a little button on and just a, um, a little chain handle. And it's a workable bag. She doesn't have anything in it at the moment, but she can put things in. She could maybe put something in if she goes shopping or put a lipstick or something in there. So I'll put that down there. So I used a half double crochet and I did one back four rows, three rows. I used in the back loop only to give a bit of a ribbed effect. And then I just went, I mean, I made this up myself. So I just went in a little bit, uh, decreased for two rows and then I increased, I did an extra chain each side just to make the sleeves, made the same for the back, stitched them together. The skirt was made from a, I felt a bit guilty about cutting it up, but it was a Zara secondhand child's shirt, uh, which you can see the boob tube, <laughs> the gone wrong outfit, the evening evening outfit. I just didn't have to say it had gone wrong. I could have just said, oh, she has an evening outfit. And you just thought, oh, that's nice. Maybe you'd have thought that's nice. So you made your thought. <laughs> I don't know what you thought, but I didn't have to say that I thought it was rubbish, did I really? Um, yes, and this was the bottom of it. And I thought that's going to make a really pretty skirt. Um, and I cut one of the flowers off to make a little a corsage. She has a little bow in her stick head. Stalk, that's the word. And no knickers no socks or anything, but I quite like the delicate, I like the delicate feet and the delicate hands. Um, yeah, there she is, Clover, Clover the garlic person. And yeah, she turned out, well, I like her. I go like her little image and personality. She likes shopping, I would say, because she's got her little bag in Paris. Imagine her shopping in Paris. Yes. I don't know what friends she will have yet, whether she will have friends with other heads, <laughs> whether she could she could have a baby, couldn't she? I haven't decided. And I'm not going to say what I'm going to make next, because as I keep saying, I just I just have to go with what I feel like making rather than planning too much. Because when I plan, I don't know if I plan and then I think that puts me off because I think I've got to do it now rather than just going with what I want to make. So um, thank you for sticking with me and just watching whatever I make and whatever I'm doing because I feel like I have a wide range of, well, not really, I suppose, because I do just make, make a lot of animals, but I have quite a, is it a strange mix of things I make maybe, a bit of a quirky mix. So um, yeah, thank you for sticking with me and watching me, whatever I'm making, um, if you do. 
So there she is anyway, she can go with my other animals, which I have. She's not really an animal, is she? People. Can you fit there? There she is. Um, so that is it. I haven't made anything else. I've halfway through some bags. I have got some bags in my shop and I put some peg bags on, which I made not that long ago, about a year ago. And they were one of the things I put on Etsy and then thought, oh no. But then I took them off again. So but I did I pop them on much because people have been buying things. I just think, oh, it's nice now because I could just put things on and have them in there and I haven't got to feel all or worried about it. It's like people, well, we know people buy them and they like them and that's, it's nice. So it's a good, and it's a nice extra thing to do. Brings it in a little bit of extra so I can um, buy more fabric and books and that kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, that's, I'm happy about that. Um, I've injured, I haven't injured, my hands are so dry um, that they're really sore. So I haven't, I haven't made anything else. Um, I'll probably do a bit more embroidery and hopefully that won't hurt. Um, but like I said, I don't really know what I'm going to be doing the week ahead. Um, I will um, leave it in the air just for you to watch next time, hopefully, and see what I have made. <laughs> I did have a couple of questions last time because I said about I wanted to tell you a bit more about me, but I couldn't think of anything. Um, but I will go through, I'll tell you more about me next time, I think. And i will share with you maybe a bit about how i started crafting and the things i've made before and all that kind of thing and i think that would be good and yeah a little bit about a little bit more about me i'm sure i can think of something i asked my husband i said oh what i want to talk a bit about more about myself in my videos but i can't think of anything and he said gardening and i thought well i can't really i don't know what to talk about gardening i like gardening that's it <laughs> i like gardening <laughs> um I like plants and flowers and yeah I don't know so hopefully I can think of more things to say but I think I can say a lot about um, how I learned to craft and other crafts and maybe other crafts I've dabbled in before yeah that would be good yeah I'll do that I think next time anyway thank you for your continued support thank you if you're new welcome um thank you for all the likes and lovely comments and i still love getting the comments and sometimes i do when someone puts an extra nice comment it does make me like i feel a bit 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 emotional about it still so you know i'm emotional but then i do feel a bit like oh that was so nice that person's put a really lovely comment and it's so nice so um yeah thank you everybody um, I hope you all have a lovely week. Um, I will be uploading again. I try every week, but sometimes it's 10 days. Because I either do it on a Wednesday or Saturday, depending on how how busy I am. And because obviously I'm at work as well. And if anything happens on the Wednesday or the Saturday and I can't do it or I haven't made anything. Um, so it's either a week or 10 days. I try not to leave it any longer than that. Um, yeah, so um, have a lovely week and I will see you soon. Take care. Bye.